Hello everyone and everything and welcome back. Let's go right ahead and break down episode 6. Bring it on. Following the trail of spice shipments, we made our way up to Nunavut Bay, Canada. Canada? Canada! It's north in North America. Hey! Yeah, so there's actually no such place as Nunavut Bay. Rather, the Nunavut region is the northernmost territory in Canada. Nunavut Bay, then, is just the game consolidating that into a space that can be used as a level. The secret hub of Jean Besson's shipping empire. As a young man, he trekked across Canada to strike it rich during the gold rush of 1852. An avid prospector, he took some chances and ended up buried alive in an avalanche. Miraculously, the quick freeze kept him alive, and 120 years later, thanks to global warming, he thawed out. A product of his time, he dreams of taming the wild north, damming every river and chopping down all the trees with progress delivered at the sharp end of an ax. Shipping spice for the Claw Gang proved a lucrative way to bankroll his one-man war against nature. And yet, I have to feel a little sorry for him. He's just a normal guy from the 1850s. Back in his day, he'd be a hero, but today, He's a villain. Ah, so he's basically the ultimate boomer then. For real though, Jean Besson is such an interesting character. Sly's 100% right, this is just what progress was 150 years ago. So we have a villain that you can really see where he's coming from. He's not necessarily sympathetic, but if we were put into stasis and woken up in the year 2200, we'd probably have some skewed values too. And I know I just made a boomer joke, but I have to roll it back, because the generation born around the 1850s was called the progressive generation. Did you do that on purpose, Sucker Punch? I hope you did. Either way, that man's got more than his fair share of the clockwork parts. What a low-tech guy like Jean Bassan is doing with robot parts is a mystery. I almost don't want to know. But as always, it's only a matter of time before I find out. So every title card we've seen so far plays Sly's leitmotif in an instrumentation that matches the theme of the episode. But I always get a special kick out of this one because the syllables just happen to match up with the notes. Take a breath everyone. We made it through Prague, the emotional height of Sly 2 without a doubt, filled with treachery, daring rescues, elements of horror, and constant tension. The quiet winter of Canada serves as a cooldown period to let us recuperate and maybe settle back into our comfort zone. That's not to say this level is easy, but the tone is definitely much more relaxed. New in the shop, we have a very desirable upgrade for Sly, Silent Obliteration, which completely alters his stealth takedown slam move to, I guess they get freaking atomized, okay. Bear in mind it's not completely silent. The initial uppercut move still makes the same amount of noise as hitting any guard does, but it will attract a fair bit less attention than the loud slam. However, I do have an issue with it, and that is it's actually a little bit slower. I like the expedience of the slam, and you can always use the vultured strike for a quieter option if you need, so buying this one should really come down to preference. I've got a lead on the clockwork parts and through town and out into the wilderness. Now normally, I'd wait until we have a proper mission to do before we start showing off the map and getting the bottles, but from the moment we step out of the safe house, we've got bottles everywhere, so we're gonna start now, on our way to the first mission. None of it Bay is a really cool area, with what is definitely the most complex ecosystem of ideas we've yet seen in a level. Seems we've set up our safe house in an old bait and tackle shop on the docks of a town that looks straight out of an old western classic. The train track running through it leads to a sprawling tangle of them out in the wilderness, surrounding this great big Matterhorn looking mountain. A small cave system is carved out beneath the mountain and scattered around are a number of small cabins to break up the wilderness. This is something I have to give praise to. Sly 2 manages to make what are honestly tiny areas feel huge. This is actually one of the smallest maps we've been on, but when any given point feels so distinct, it gives the illusion of being vast and sprawling. Now, about those bottles. Our first six are all around the safe house. Head down the docks and find one each on the top of both these boats and over top the sign at the base of the dock. One on top of the safe house itself, then one on top of the boat behind it, and then at the back corner of the safe house. Dang, Murray, I know you can drive, but how did you even park the van here? Next, let's head into town. On top of the usual stock of guards, we've got these big, uh, snow tanks driving around. 
trip the spotlight in front of them and they'll fire their cannon at you, but they won't notice you hanging out in front of their windshield. Trip the spotlights on the side though and they'll summon three of these goose guards at once. Prepare for a brawl, especially since the ruckus will probably cause some of the flashlight meese to come running. Oh my lord! Head onto the top of this building near the docks to find a bottle up here, and then we'll cross onto the top of the biggest building to find two more up here. French fries, they sit on the Chesterfield, watch the hockey game, shoot the puck, daddy -o! Now cross to the building on the other side of the tracks and find another pair of bottles. And then cross the next pair of tracks to find one more atop the building here. Also, be careful crossing these tracks. Just like in Prague, the trains are instant death. Keeping that in mind, head along these tracks and find a bottle within this tunnel, and we'll kick off our first mission. That cabin may seem rustic, but don't be fooled. It's the control center for Jean Bizon's trade empire. Sneak inside and raid his files. You're sure to find out where he keeps his clockwork parts. Ransacking his files doesn't sound hard. Now, climbing up a sheer rock wall? That'll be a challenge. You're in luck. Before Jean Vassan took over, this used to be a popular destination for rock climbers. Some of their old wall hooks are still around. I'm guessing I just jump and hit the circle button to latch on. That's right. And remember to lean back before you spring off the hook. You'll get more altitude. Thanks for the tip. I'll give it a try. Woo, it's our first brand new thief ability added to Sly 2 since... Crawling. I still can't believe that wasn't in the first game. Another new enemy type, these Rossetti Moles are sort of like this level's equivalent to the snakes. The biggest difference being that they are actually a threat. If you don't take them out the moment they pop out, they'll probably get a hit off on you. This is actually the first real use I know of for Sly's triangle dive bomb attack, letting you take these guys out while they're attacking. But also be aware that they respawn constantly, though they may just be best left alone. Jackpot, Sly! That's Sean Bisson! Looks like he didn't notice me come in. Just stay out of sight, and take a picture of each of his train routes. They should narrow our search for his share of the clockwork parts. Alright, I'm on it. Buckle up, we're gonna be in this room for a while. If you really want to, you can just grab the pictures you need and keep on moving, but Jean is having a juicy phone call right now, and how can you resist eavesdropping? Hello, Arpeggio again. Salutations, Mr. Arpeggio. Y'all got time to shoot the breeze? Of course, for you, Jean, always. Although, must we communicate through that dreadful speakerphone? This is not our first exposure to Arpeggio. If you remember back to episode 2, he was in attendance at Rajan's ball. He was the parrot in the giant mobile birdcage. Yeah, I can think better while my legs move. Pumps blood to your brain. Yes, of course. One must keep blood in one's brain. But do tell, is there some pressing matter you'd like to discuss? First off, are you still a coming on schedule to get that Northern Lights battery? Yes, we're well underway. My blimp should arrive at the end of the week. Bullseye. They made Bassan's awareness super low in this room. I feel like they really didn't want you to get caught. You can do almost anything short of hitting him, and he'll just keep trucking along. For a second, when are you gonna give me a look-see at that clockwork brain of yours? I'd sure like to buy it off you. Be so you covetous troglodyte. You've already got the lion's share of the parts. Would you take my meager portion of the robotic bird for your own and strip me of all my earthly pleasures? Easy there, partner. You're all up in a lather. It's just that I found some real use for the clockwork parts I got. Why, I put three of them in the engines of my best trains. With those robotic doohickeys feeding the fire, them trains will run all night and all day. I call them my iron horses. Of course, I gotta keep the plans hidden. Stuffed him in my three trophy bass. Sly, did you hear that? Bison's hidden the iron horse blueprints in his trophy bass. Head for the fish on top of the fireplace and steal those plans. Funnily enough, Bentley will actually say this regardless of how far you've gotten into the phone call. First off, are you still a coming on schedule to get that Northern Lights battery? Sly, did you hear that? No, in, in fact, I didn't. Sounds like you're making capital use of your share of the robotic loot. But for now, the clockwork brain stays with me on the blimp. Although, when I arrive to pick up the Northern Lights battery, I might be persuaded to give you a peek. That'll do fine. By the way, you ready to giddy up into Perry for the final hoedown? Yes! The blimp's hypnotist wavelengths conform to the specs drawn up by the Contessa, and Dimitri, before his unfashionable capture, did a bang-up job of distributing spice through his nightclub. 
So, let's talk about the Claw Gang. After going through so many levels, we've got a decent understanding of their operation now. It's all based around spice, so we've got Rajan, he grows the spice, he supplies it to the rest of the Claw Gang, and distributes it around India and possibly other parts of Asia. Dimitri and Jean Bassan are major spice recipients. Dimitri is based in Paris, but it's likely he was in charge of distribution to much of Europe. And Jean Bassan, of course, distributes across North America. Then we have the Contessa, whose hypnosis research was dependent on spice. In exchange for a constant supply, she could use her influence with Within Interpol to keep the authorities off the Claw Gang's scent. It's possible there are other majors we have yet to hear about, but our last one for now is Arpeggio. Bentley said back in the Starry Eyed Encounter that he specializes in exotic technology, but the fact that the clockwork part he received was the brain is a possible hint to his greater role within the gang. Sounds like all you're missing is some northern light electricity! You're correct, sir! Yours is the final piece to the puzzle, the missing link! Once the battery is aboard, nothing will stand in the Claw Gang's way. Paris will be ours. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, I guess I'll be seeing you at the end of the week. Right. Farewell, be so. Stiff up a lip. Ta-ta. Trophy bats. Excellent. Now get out of that cabin before you're spotted. What? A thief? After analyzing Bissant's decorating techniques, I think we'll find the other trophy mass above the mantle in the two remaining cabins. Now our goal is the other two cabins out here, so let's get back to bottles. We're gonna wait for the nearby train, climb atop it using this rail, and then use it to hop atop the cabin. From there, these icy platforms have two more bottles. We'll climb back up to the top of the cabin again, jump to these train tracks, and grab one there. And another on these platforms going down to the ice. Now you might assume, given these platforms over top of it, that you'd want to avoid landing on the ice, but... Nah. It makes a big show of cracking when you touch it, but that's really just a warning not to go too far out. As long as you stick close to the land, it's as safe as solid ground. Go too far out though, and it's instant death. Which conveniently puts us back at the first cabin. So we're gonna double back the way we came and head towards the start of the mission we're on. You'll notice there's a bear here, another completely unique enemy. This level has more unique hazards than any other, jeez. Bears are essentially supercharged guards. They hit hard and run fast, but there are no friends to the other guards around here. If you do have one on your tail, distracting them with some unsuspecting geese is a good way to make your escape. Or if you're feeling especially metal, you can lure them into a freaking train! Yeah! <laughs> Wait, what was I doing again? Oh, yeah, bottles. There's an entrance to a bear cave near where we found that first bear, and inside are three bottles all in a circle, as well as our first treasure. Head out the other way and along the tracks towards one of our cabins. Before heading up there, I want to point out that every enemy in the game is too scared to even move if you get them onto the ice. Yes, this is my life now. Forever. Ever. Climb up this series of platforms to find a bottle along the way, and we'll head into the cabin. Yep, just like I thought! Get to the fish above the mantle and steal those blueprints. Attention all cabin guards. I've heard tell from the boys at Ponderosa Cabin there's someone been in my head blueprints. Everyone stay sharp. This ain't no summer camp. I don't pay you boys to lollygag while there's a thief in these parts. We know from this line that this is meant to be the third cabin we go into, not the second, but I get a kick out of doing it this way because it means he checked for the blueprints in his cabin, found they were missing, and went, uh, couldn't have been on my watch, those lazy guards. So if you accidentally step on these bottles of syrup, is that why Canadians are so fond of syrup? Because it doubles as a burglar alarm? These bookshelves have a highly satisfying amount of coins tucked away, but also don't destroy the books too fast. Look super close and you'll find a little easter egg. The sly logo on a volume titled How to Play. That's... that's... that's just adorable. On our way out of the cabin, we've got our second treasure next to the door. And I also want to point out all these bear traps. They can be destroyed, but you have to be a little clever with them. Oddly, they can only be broken when you use triangle button techniques. So the dive bomb and the uppercut weird. We'll find a bottle right here on the ice floats, and by climbing up and running along these power lines towards town, we'll find another. Now let's head back towards the mountain on these tracks to find a bottle on the way, and the rest will be around our last cabin. We'll start low, grabbing one in the river, then on these tracks heading towards the cabin, then dropping back down beneath the cabin to find one down here. Now we'll climb up these platforms for one on the way, one up here next to the cabin, and then down the northbound tracks for our last bottle. Ooh, that felt good. Let's celebrate by goofing off a little. We're gonna head up to the top of this tall track, and we're gonna hop onto this train's second car. When we try and ride it through the electric tunnel, we're gonna get ourselves a catapult glitch. It's just like old times. By the way, thanks to Joshua Barnhart for letting me know about this one. The last trophy bass is above the fireplace. 
Be careful. Yeah, I see it, Bentley. And as much as I'd like to sneakily navigate this cabin by cleverly using the environment, I also see my vault. Sean Besson's in for another rude awakening the next time he checks in this vault. The code should be 129. The music box might just be the best power-up in the game. It draws attention with noise much like the alarm clock, but any guard close enough to it instantly falls asleep, enabling you to pick them off one at a time, loot their pockets, or just leave them sleeping, um, comfortably? Oh, but that's not even what makes it the best item in the game. No, rather, it's that this little music box has... <laughs> What the heck does that even mean? Well, take a look at any hanging platform that's affected by the game's physics engine. Notice how it wobbles when Sly stands on it. Throw an alarm clock on it, and it'll react exactly how you'd probably expect. Throw a on it, and... Yeah, I have no clue why this is. Perhaps it's just an oversight, but it's a fun oversight. Also, for the like five of you who care, the song that the music box actually plays is called Brahms Wiegendlied, or Lullaby. One of those old canons that's been given like 20 sets of lyrics over the decades. Exceptional work, Sly! That's the last of the blueprint! Armed with all three blueprints, we should be able to isolate and track the Iron Horse trains through that satellite dish. Top of the mountain, huh? Shouldn't take long. This appears to be the only way up. Keep an eye out for those rock climber wall hooks. They might be useful. Up here at the top of the mountain, we have another new enemy type. These eagles will try and swoop down and claw at you when you're at especially high points. And here next to our objective is the meanest treasure of all. It's right there. It's right at the end of our mission. But as soon as we finish our job, we'll be teleported back to the safe house. Only way to get this one is to come all the way back up here. This is great. We've got total access to the train's GPS system. It's all on my computer. Head back to the safe house. I'll crunch some numbers and give you and Murray the rundown. <laughs> Thanks to Sly's efforts, we now know the location of all three of the local clockwork parts. Two lugs and a stomach. John Besson has grafted each piece to the engine in one of his iron horse trains. This improvement allows the trains to run all night and all day. We won't have the luxury of sneaking in while they're stopped. Okay, but like, what are they doing then? Aren't they picking up and delivering shipments, or are they just, like, vibing? While they're in motion, the only way aboard is through a hatch on the caboose roof, which unfortunately has been locked down. These need to go. First, collect the spice gas from the balloons above town, and then land on the back of the caboose to blow off the locks. Once the way is cleared, I'll suit up and jump into Iron Horse number one while it passes near town. With some luck, we'll have the first clockwork lug in a few hours. Sly, it's... it's awful. I can't believe it. Slow down, Bentley. What happened? Murray, he went out looking for a snack and got captured by Inspector Fox. Carmelita? She's here? Don't worry, Bentley. I know how to handle her. But I don't know where she's locked up furry. I'm used to having all the facts. Calm down. Carmelita's not cruel like the Contessa. I'll follow her without being seen. She's bound to check on Murray sooner or later. Okay, that's... that's a good plan. Just don't get caught too. I don't want to be alone again. God, watching these characters grow is a joy. Bentley may have beaten the odds once, but everything about this still scares him out of his shell. And Sly's little laugh here? Calm down. That's just the stuff friendship is made of. Honestly, this could be my favorite line read in this entire game. But now we've got Carmelita on the field here. Seems helping her escape last time didn't earn us any brownie points. She's ready to bust us at a moment's notice. Freeze, Cooper. I like how she is essentially a flashlight guard, enabling us to interact with her in this new context by giving her mechanics we're familiar with. I love how different her walking animation is to other flashlight guards, who have a generally laid-back stride. They're in no rush, they're just working. Carmelita moves with purpose, and she'll zap literally anyone that gets in her way. We'll slip up in your mind. Now let's see how she likes our new toy. 
<laughs> yeah, no, that that wasn't what I was expecting. Another bizarre property of this little box, it's sleep waves are actually a hitbox that radiates out of it. And since Carmelita is immune, it just beats the snot out of her instead. With this in mind, I checked, and yes, you can use it to kill the snakes. Hey, criminal, you doing okay in there? I know it's tight, but you won't get shocked if you hold still. I'm okay. And thanks for that bag of jelly beans. I was starving. Won't be long now. Once I bust the other members of your gang, we'll get out of here. I'm grateful for the jelly beans and all, but aren't you on the outs with Interpol right now? I'm an honest cop. Busting the Cooper gang will prove my innocence and show everyone that Constable Neela set me up. You mean Captain Neela? I hear she got promoted. Whatever. Just sit tight. I'm going to look for your pals. Murray, I've come to break you out. Bad chance. This thing is triple padlocked, and Inspector Fox is carrying all the keys. Come on, buddy. You know I'm an expert at pickpocketing. She's tough, Sly. If you manage to get a key, you'd better run for it. Carmelita's sure to notice and chase after you. Leave her to me. So even the Murray says Carmelita is tough, eh? Only one way to know for sure. Everyone stay calm. I've got the situation totally under control. Okay, so, yeah, she's, she's pretty tough. Another fantastic pickpocket mission. What just, Cooper? We've got to snag all three from Carmelita who will detect us every time we grab a key and then pursue us just like the good old days. You can't run forever, coward. My favorite way to do this is to grab a key and then hop a train. Of course you can get as creative as you want. I imagine programming her pathfinding AI in this huge maze of train tracks and cliffs was no easy task. And there are absolutely a few ways you can abuse it. Justice will find you. There's nowhere to hide. Hide and cower, worm. You're no match for me. Thanks, pal. I was getting a charley horse standing in that box. My pleasure. You know how I love to mess around with Carmelita. Yeah, that's weird. See you back at the safe house. After completing this mission, Carmelita will continue to patrol the map on a permanent basis, making this by far the most unique enemies we've ever had to contend with in a single mission. It's been super fun to see how they all interact with each other. Okay, Sly, we need to break into the Iron Horse trades, but the only way in, through the caboose, is locked. To blow the locks off, you'll need to collect the ultra-unstable denatured spice gas from those balloons floating above town. Man, I'm going out of my head with this one. Chemistry has never been my strongest subject, but I really have no idea what denatured spice gas could even be, or for what possible purpose you would store it in balloons. You're lucky you're fun, spice balloon mission, because this isn't even the hardest I'm going to come down on you. How am I supposed to get up there to collect the spice gas? Murray's already commandeered this ice plane. Jump on its strut, and he'll fly you up to a good paragliding altitude. Oh, and strap on a special vacuum backpack. It'll automatically collect the spice gas after you've popped a balloon. Sounds like fun. Once you've collected enough gas, you'll have to land directly on the train's caboose. Why directly on the caboose? Denatured spice gas is very unstable at lower altitudes. Unless you land on the caboose, you won't have time to get the gas tank to the lock before it blows up. So you're saying I either land on the caboose or get blown to bits? That's correct. Chemistry can be a harsh mistress. Hang on tight. We're going up. Remember to use your paraglider! 
yeah, for whatever reason, trying to attack up here causes you to instantly explode. Which is sad, because I really wanted to try and dive bomb these trains from way up here. One trick to keep in mind on this job, you seem to gain much more height when you hit a balloon while your paraglider is out than you do by just bouncing on it. That did it! You got a full tank of gas! Time to land on a caboose! Ooh, that was smooth. Get back to the ice plane! Two more cabooses to blow open! Yeah, you absolutely do not have to land on them by dropping from that high, but it's a fun challenge. Meet Murray at the ice plane! You guys are doing great! There's just one caboose left! You know, I really gotta wonder if there's a less life-threatening way to do this. Like, maybe if we had a demolitions expert with a cache of explosives, or some kind of unmanned aerial vehicle capable of dropping bombs. Yes! You guys did it! All the iron horse trains are unlocked! Oh hey, it's Bentley's turn. Attention, man. This here's John Masson. What kind of monster would go out and purposefully kill a wild bear? Before heading out, Bentley's got a really nice power-up available in the shop, the Hover Pack. It gives him unparalleled jump height, and he rivals Sly for distance. This honestly turns Bentley into a virtually different character. We can now navigate certain areas with the most ease of any of the three, and it's got really satisfying momentum physics that makes it especially fun to play around with. A far cry from the meek little guy that first stepped out of that safe house in Paris. According to this timetable, Iron Horse number one should be passing by any time now. I, I see it. It's moving awfully fast. Just jump on the caboose and go in through the hatch. Piece of cake. Okay, we are officially aboard our first train. And let me remind you, the hatch is the only way in while it's moving. There are no other conceivable ways we could have gotten into this train from the outside. That's why Sly had to risk his life making precision landings while carrying unstable explosive gas. Facetiousness aside, I love a good train robbery. Advancing through several security-packed cars on your way to the front is a lot of fun, and there's plenty of neat details along the way. It probably won't surprise you to learn we're not actually moving right now, but rather the environment we're in functions like a treadmill, unloading behind us and loading in ahead of us while we stay static, with some parallax scrolling on the mountain ranges to give us the illusion of moving through a larger environment. That's all good, because riding these trains while they are moving does weird things to our inertia. Check out this car loaded with crates and barrels. These trains are in charge of shipping Rajan spices all across the country, and you can see these barrels have the claw gang insignia on them. If you've paid close attention, you may have spotted some of these exact barrels of spice scattered around some of the other levels. Ooh, hey, this is a pretty neat puzzle of sorts. Both of the paths we can sidle along are guarded by flashlight guards. Even if we manage not to get knocked off the train by them, that'd be a tough fight as Bentley. So you have to notice that there's a spot before the end of the sidle path that you can jump atop of. It's almost a shame you can bypass that entire conundrum with the jetpack. Chalk up one strange robot organ for us, and one less iron horse train for John Bassan. Things are going great. We've already stolen one of Jean Bassan's three clockwork parts. However, Iron Horse 2 and 3 are going to be a little tougher to crack. First, I'll need to hop aboard Iron Horse 2 and do a little preemptive RC chopper strike to clear out the air defenses. Once cleared, it'll be up to Sly to work his magic in the interior to get at that second clockwork lug. Murray, you'll need to trap some of the local bear cubs in order to unlock a nearby hand car. We're gonna need it to catch up with Iron Horse number three. But don't worry, the cubs won't be hurt. Although I can't say the same for the guards. Let's keep giving Bentley his time to shine, why not? Heads up, Bentley. Here comes Iron Horse number two. You and that RC chopper of yours ready? We'll get the job done. Provided I can catch up with that train! <laughs> this had better work. Sly won't stand a chance making it through this train unless I neutralize the aerial defenses. Good thing I outfitted the RC chopper with a new cannon. Let's see. 
The X button drops bobs and the square button shoots forward. So we've added a forward gun to our chopper, turning this into a sort of Galaga space invadery kind of minigame. I should bomb those missile launchers before things get ugly. But with the additional element of still having our bombs to use on things below us. So we're doing battle on two planes at once. I like that quite a bit. I'm especially fond of the fact that you can hold down square to shoot consistently, but you can fire even faster if you rapidly press the button. That won't be too important to know just now, but keep it in mind for later. Deadly strikes again! Yes, the aerial defenses are down! Now it's all up to Sly to finish the job! Sly, the second Iron Horse train is coming too fast! You might not have time to jump on top! Relax, Bentley. There's more than one way to get on top of that caboose. Wait a minute. This train is going backwards to how it usually does. What's that all about? The other clockwork lug should be hooked into the engine's furnace. Sneak your way up there and grab it. Now it's time for a sly flavored train robbery, which obviously means more abusing our music box. No, it, it actually means we have a series of linear platforming and security challenges, once again making me nostalgic for the original game. Always a plus. You should have seen how many missile launchers there were attached to these train cars. I don't mind saying that it took some real finesse on my part to deal with the defenses. Heck yeah, Bentley, talk your talk. Attention Iron Horse number two. In case you haven't heard, some lucky you are managed to make off with the clockwork lug and Iron Horse one. All the guards on duty have been punished according to the lumberjack code. Don't let the same thing happen to you. You boys have done some real good work lately, and I hate to have them put you out of disability. That's it. Keep your ass in shock. Alright, this has nothing to do with anything going on in the game, but in editing this episode, I decided to try out using auto-generated subtitles instead of writing them myself, and I gotta say, the temptation to keep them as is here is strong. Okay, so apparently the silent takedown can affect multiple guards at once? Alright, that's pretty cool. What the heck is the emotion this face is supposed to convey? Okay, I'm kind of dreading this, but let's do the Bear Cub one. We'll need this ham car to chase down Iron Horse number three. But for the time being, it's all fenced in. No problem. I'll tear that fence apart. A metal's too resilient for my bombs or your muscle. So for this job, we're going to have to rely on a stronger force. The love of a mother for her child. Uh... You got something to tell me? Yes, I've had the good fortune of locating two juvenile bear cubs. The heck, why is the Binocucom Zoom playing right now? Did it used to do that in the original? If you put them together inside that fence, they'd surely start fighting. No, no, it did not. We're using this one. Bears at that age are particularly antisocial. Noise from the squabble should bring their mother around to free the angry youths. I get ya. That big mama bear will be able to smash the fence no problem to free her cubs. That's correct. Beware, cubs, for you are hunted by the Murray. All right, Bentley said we wouldn't hurt any bear cubs. No, no God, Carmelita, Carmelita, stop. What are you doing? It's just a cub, Carmelita. Oh my God. You think I can just unsee the things I've seen? Good work, Murray. I'll send you the coordinates to the next bear cub. Okay, whoa. So apparently these goose guards are the toughest guards yet, apart from General Clawfoot, I suppose. They're the only ones so far who can take three punches from Murray instead of two. Even the Moosin go down in only two. Sorry to say it, but the other cub is somewhere in this bear cave. Be careful, Murray. Yeah, Benley, I think you just like putting us in unreasonably unsafe situations. Only more violent. Okay, guys, this is it. All right, that's that's really what you're going with. Time to break into Iron Horse number three. 
and carry away the clockwork stop. Now the train's moving too fast to jump onto here in town, so we'll have to catch up with it on Murray's new handcar. Once we're in position, Sly will hop aboard and make his way up to the engine. While he travels through the interior, I'll provide air support with my RC chopper. I've planned this as a textbook train robbery. If we all do our jobs right, what could possibly go wrong? Why did you have to say that? This heist is starting as Murray. Uh, hang on, have any of the actual heist missions been headed up by Sly so far? No, 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 and no. Hop aboard, guys. We've got a train to catch. Really, Sly, you're just gonna stand there? Handcars are a two-man job. You're an athletic dude. Come on. Got it. Strong work, Murray. Yeah, sure. The Murray's strength knows no limit. You're on, Sly. Break into that train and steal the clockwork stomach. That John Bassan's one strange guy. The claw gang divides up the clockwork parts, and he walks away with a stomach and lungs? It still creeps me out. Get creeped out later when we aren't riding an antique handcar at breakneck speeds. Good point. It's time for a train robbery. Alright, train robbery number three. Another one is Sly, but they've kicked it up a notch. Check out the second car. This is the craziest laser formation I think we've ever seen. We've got this grid going along the bottom, but we've also got these sets of diagonal lasers going from the bottom of one side to the top of the other. Sure, if you really wanted to, you could crawl underneath all of this, but mama didn't raise no quitter. I've freaking got this. And it's as simple as that, baby, every single time. Ain't nobody getting past me. That there clockwork stomach is as safe as a snowman in winter. I'd like to meet the varmint that's been looting my iron horse dreams. By Jiminy, I get hot neath the collar just thinking about how I cut that boy down. I'd kill him like a spotted owl. I sure you here? Just can't stay away from these clockwork parts, can you? Oh, I just do it to meet exciting ladies like yourself. If you'd like some excitement, why not climb up on top of the train? I'm sure to get your heart pumping, maybe even show you my new ride. No thanks, Neela. I've seen enough already. What's the problem, Poodle? Afraid you can't take me on? Have to call up your little friends for help? Come in, little friends. Neela's got me pinned down. Any chance of air support? I've already launched the RC chopper. She won't know what hit her. Come on, Cooper. Let's play. What in blazes? All right, little RC friend. This should be a quick bit of destruction. Oh, -ho, Neela's back. I definitely wouldn't have expected our boss fight against her to be in this Galaga bullet hell form. But here we are. Just hold down square and focus on dodging, and her HP bar will drain pretty fast. Or you could mash as hard as you can and take her down that way. Oh, you Robbie blighter! This is a... What? Oh no! Oh no! That was some fancy flying, little friend. Whatever you say, Poodle. Sly and Neela's crackling banter is honestly just delicious, but we're also starting to see Neela become a bit unhinged. She played us like a fiddle in the first half of the game, but our escape in our antics in Prague definitely seemed to have riled her. Each of her lines seemed to have this slightly manic tone to them. Hey Sly, get to that clockwork stomach fast! This old hand cart is starting to fall apart! Yeah, yeah, Murray, I got this. Although, mind you, this right here might be the most dangerous thing Sly has ever done. I feel like he'd be more likely to survive an explosion than falling off the train right here. Never thought I'd see the day when his stomach got turned into a tool of evil. Looks like John Bassan's wised up and bolted the stomach down. We'll have to crack the engine block to get it free. Then that's just what we'll do. A well-placed bomb down the train's smokestack will knock it loose. Just make sure to take some cover. Not so fast, chum. The clockwork part is mine. They will all be mine. 
Okay, Neela's back again, and honestly, this might just be the hardest thing in the game. At least in terms of the fact that we haven't had a lot of practice with this mode of combat. Avoiding all these projectiles, as well as so many different patterns of attack, can be extremely difficult. I imagine especially so if you haven't had a lot of exposure to bullet hell shooters outside this game. I don't want to give the impression I don't like it though. I love a challenge, and I think this is a very fair one. But I could absolutely see it feeling unfair to other players. Even still, a bit of persistence or just another bout of button mashing, and she'll go down just fine. You won't stop me! Not the Cooper gang! Not Interpol! Not anyone! I feel Neela gets a bit of flack for her vocal performance, especially here. I don't know, she's no Julie Andrews, but I've never felt her delivery was particularly lacking. You guys will have to let me know if it sticks out to you. Stand clear, Sly. This might be messy. Sly! Sly! You okay? I've got an upset stomach on my hands, but other than that, I feel great. The gang and I had pulled off the impossible. We'd successfully robbed all of John Bisson's iron horse trains, and we were walking away with three, count them, three clockwork parts. My god, we found it! The sideways D-shaped organ, the treasure of legends! And as a bonus, we shut down spice distribution in all of North America. Needless to say, we were pretty pleased with ourselves. Can't say the same for Carmelita. Once again, the framed policewoman had to run from the cops. Little detail here, I love how every character in this scene is ankle deep in snow. Which was fun at first, but I'm starting to feel a little sorry for her. I mean, what if they replaced Carmelita with someone else? I don't want another cop on my tail. She's a big part of why this is all fun. This is a super strong character moment from Sly. I love that he realizes what the repercussions could be for letting her situation play out, even if it is fun in the moment. That shows a lot of maturity. Sooner or later, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to clear her name, some way other than turning myself in. Phew, all right. He who tames the iron horse is done. Somehow that level felt super short. I think it's the great pacing. I love how we cap off three of the four acts with a train robbery and a clockwork part. Really satisfying to that part of my lizard brain that just likes getting things. Other than that though, I think this level actually gets placed as most people's least favorite in this game. I can definitely see why, putting it right after the prog levels, it has a lot to live up to. And a lot of things do feel like a step down. Exploring around the wilderness isn't especially engaging compared to what came before. While there are some platforming paths to take, there's not much reason to take them. And while Jean Bassan's backstory is interesting, he does sort of feel like a big dumb lunk that we just get to stunt on all episode. But all of that's deliberate. As I said at the start, Canada functions as a cooldown period, a way to let us catch our breath, and I think it pulls that off super well. A lot of questions left unanswered though. Jean Bassan wasn't arrested, we fended off Neela, but she doesn't seem any worse for wear, and of course, we have our Peggio to think about. Seems we'll be pretty busy in the next episode. Before I sign off, I want to let you know that the next video, Breaking Down Episode 7, is live right now on my Patreon. Assuming nothing's gone wrong, I don't know, I'm new at this. You'll find the link in the description below. From now on, all the tiers will be one video ahead of the YouTube releases. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.